Hi and welcome to TouchView Interactive. We're going to take a look at the new Generation 4 Ultra Series panel, the latest in our installment of lineups. So we still offer the same screen sizes in a 98, an 86, a 75, and a 65, and you do still have that optional Windows PC that just integrates and inserts directly into the side of the panel. Uh, that comes in a Core i5, our Core i7. You can go ahead and connect that to your Wi-Fi network or go ahead and hardwire that as well. Uh, and then we have three HDMI inputs. Most of those are located on the side of the panel. So with that HDMI cable and a USB touch cable, that's also gonna give you up to 20 and 40 points of touch control over your own device with that. Also on our Gen 4 panel, we've kept those same ports in the front. Uh, so if those side inputs are a little difficult to get to, you can just go ahead and plug directly into the front of the panel with that HDMI and a USB touch cable. And again, that's gonna give you full touch control over your PC or Mac device if you wanna go ahead and hardwire your device. Now, I do have that optional Windows PC that's integrated into my panel. I'm just running Windows 10 Pro, so anything you're used to doing on your laptop, you're gonna be able to do on this internal PC. I use it for Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Classroom, any kind of content, there's really no difference than having that PC. It's gonna hang off your network just like any other device would at your location. So pretty easy to navigate on the TouchView panel. Uh, it does come with a standard remote control. We've kept this pretty simple, didn't add a lot of buttons or anything. Uh, it does have two 15 watt stereo speakers built into it so you can adjust volume control with the remote control. Uh, as well as change inputs and power on and power off the, pa the panel, or, or maybe take a screenshot of anything that's on the panel as well. So what are the differences between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 panel? Well, the Gen 4 panel, we've updated to the la latest processors on the market. Uh, we're now running Android version 11, and a few hardware changes that we've made is we've added a 4K high definition camera. So that has a 110 degree wide angle field of view. So it works fantastic for distance learning, remote learning, or again, in a conference room setting uh, for any kind of video conferencing. We've also added a six microphone line array microphone. This is a noise canceling microphone that's typically good up to about 20 to 25 feet away from the panel. Uh, and I've been playing around with that and the results are actually very, very remarkable. Also, one last feature that we've added is an NFC card reader. So each panel will come with a set number of NFC cards and that's going to allow the staff to just go ahead, scan that NFC card directly on the front of the panel and use that as credentials to log in on the Android side of the panel so we can differentiate users on the Android side with that. So also very easy to navigate from the side toolbar here. If I expand that out, that's always gonna be there and available to you. It doesn't matter what input you're on or if you're screen sharing a device. But if I select that little HDMI connector, that's another way to bring up all of those inputs if I do have a device hardwired directly in. Again, we have three HDMI inputs, the display port, uh, plus front and rear USB-C port connectivity along with that as well. And what's nice about that USB-C port is with one single cable on like a MacBook Pro, for example, that's gonna give me audio, vid video, charging capabilities, uh, as well as charging and power control over that device also. So if I select this little home button here, that's a quick way to jump over to the Android side of the screen. So typically when you power your panel on, it's gonna default into the Android settings on the Android system side. So this is what handles all my on-screen touch control functions, my menu settings with this, and a few pieces of software that come pre-included on the panel with this. And the first one we'll take a look at is our SWrite whiteboarding software. So a few feature set updates that we've done to the latest series panel, but pretty much everything is still gonna be basically the same as our Gen 3 series panel that uh, is out there as well. So with this, when I launch into it, you can see my toolbar down below. That's gonna allow me to choose between a pen and a marker. I can choose my line weighting thickness or change colors if I want. And then if I select this hand tool, that's how I can get into multi-touch mode. So our new Gen 4 series panel features 40 points of touch control. So that means you can have multiple people up here writing, erasing, interacting at the same time. Also recognizes what I call gesture erasing. So if I just kind of flatten my hand, automatically turns into an eraser. I don't have to change tool sets or anything. But then if I grab this hand tool one more time and kind of turn it off, now I can put it into infinite canvas mode. So that's gonna allow me to bump this content right up off the screen. So again, if I'm in class or we're taking some math problems, I start to kind of run out of room, uh, I can just use my hand to just kind of bump that content up, continue on with my list. 
Uh, you can also do things like pinch to zoom. So you really do have this infinite canvas space that you can populate all kinds of content with. Down on the lower right corner, if I hit the plus button, that allows me to go ahead and bring up a, a secondary page. So if I wanted to build out kind of a flip chart presentation, uh, I can add more content or add PDF files or anything like that, and then be able to bounce and toggle back and forth between those various pages. Also down in my toolbar, a few things that we've added uh, is some new ruler tools that are integrated directly in with that. Uh, geometric shapes you can bring in, uh, put those directly in. Uh, also some grid lines, so the nice grid line patterns that we've added. Uh, and then my little toolbox that I have here, that's a way that I can bring in any kind of image files, video clips, I can insert a PDF. We've also added mind map templates as well as flow charts. I can also still go into that split screen mode that we had on the Gen 3 panel, but we've expanded on this a little bit. So again, in this mode, I have two zones, so you can have multiple people up here kind of interacting at one time, working in their own workspace here. And these truly are two kind of independent zones. Now on our older series panel, we only gave the option of having two or three zones. This new version of this, I can have two zones, I can have three zones, I can have four zones, or maybe I wanna have up to six zones now. So that really comes in handy, for example, if you wanna put the panel into tabletop mode with one of our fixed height adjustable stands. Uh, it's motorized height adjustable, so I can lay the panel flat. Uh, and that's a really great way to be able to utilize that with the six zones and laying the panel flat in that regard. Once I back out of this content, it's just gonna dump me back into that S-Rite whiteboarding software. So maybe I wanna import a file or some kind of image or anything. If I come back to my little toolbox here, I'm gonna say I wanna insert a, a PDF. And let's see, I think I have one here. Uh, it's just based on telling time. So I'm gonna drop that directly in. Now one more step that I have to do is down below, you'll notice that there's a little scissor icon. So if I select that, it's gonna kinda of take a copy of that file so I can close out the original import. Now if I wanna move or manipulate that, I can select my lasso tool here and then select that and then that's going to allow me to then reposition and place that wherever I want to in my AirStrike software and then when I click that lasso tool again, it's gonna lock it in place. So now I can go back, grab my pen tool, uh, and start to work on this worksheet. So I've kind of kept it simple here uh, this afternoon. So this is increments of five minutes. So again, you kind of get the idea that as I'm filling this out, uh, I can go ahead and save this. I can re-erase or use my gesture erasing to go ahead and flatten that out and just erase that content. So once I get some content populated up here, we give you a few ways to save and share this out. One way to do that is in my lower left toolbar down here. Uh, if I select this little icon, that's gonna export it out uh, as a QR code. So if students are issued iPads or mobile devices, they can scan that QR code off and it's gonna pull it uh, onto their device as a PNG image, so a flattened image, so they can just kind of take this from class uh, and grab it and go. Another way to be able to do uh, some saving action is if I choose this little three line ellipsis menu here, that's gonna allow me to either say, hey, I wanna save this back directly to my local disk. Uh, it's gonna save that to the whiteboard folder, or they can say, no, I wanna link this directly uh, to my cloud storage. So for example, I can choose NetDisk, and then that's going to allow me to log into my own Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive account with that. So again, it's a great way to just populate some content, be able to import PDF documents, uh, any kind of image files that you want to, building out multiple pages, and then being able to save and share that content out. Another piece of software on the Android side uh, is gonna be screen transmission. Well, this is our eShare software. So our newest version of this allows up to 50 student devices to be connected at any one time. And I have the room on my screen in this 4K high definition display to show up to nine devices all kind of tiled out at one time on my display. So keep in mind, this works regardless of what operating system. If I'm a PC user, a Mac user, uh, maybe students, again, have those iPads, Chromebooks, Android devices, all those operating systems are supported. So we put a built-in user guide to help you kind of get connected here. On your devices, I do recommend that you launch a browser and just go to eshare.app. That's gonna allow you to download the little Cinder application where I'm gonna get full use of the capabilities of our eShare software. So I have my laptop here in the studio. I have that eShare application installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect directly to my panel. Uh, and now with this, I can either choose to share my screen directly to the panel, or we also give you another option called TV Mirror, 
where it's going to cast what's on my touch view panel and send that out to devices. So this is a great tool for those students that are issued Chromebooks and you want to be able to cast the contents of your panel maybe onto their devices within the classroom. So for date, today, I'm just going to choose to go ahead and share my screen. Now, you'll see I got a little pop-up window that happened down there in the corner. That's because I'm running this in what I call acceptance or permissions mode. So that's going to give the teacher or the presenter uh, at the front of the panel the ability to either accept or reject somebody casting their device directly to the panel. So you're going to have that kind of fail-safe feature built in as well. So not only do I have that wireless screen sharing directly to the panel without any cables connected, but I also have full touch control capabilities over that device as well. So as a matter of fact, if I pull up uh, our touchview.com website, I'll grab my laptop and you can kind of see as I scroll through our website, I'm actually controlling my laptop, but doing that uh, at the panel with that. So it's a great way to be able to pull up any existing lesson plan and be able to utilize that. So as I said, I can have 50 devices connected and show nine on the screen at any one time. So for example, I have a little Android tablet here in my studio. It's gonna work the same for iPads as well. But now as I share that, you can see how it goes into split screen mode. Uh, I can launch into a browser, uh, maybe pull this and take it full screen now and focus my attention on that and then be able to minimize that back down and then come back over to my lesson plan or my laptop contents and then take that full screen as well. So again, I can have up to nine tiled out devices on the screen at any one time. So while I'm screen sharing my laptop, maybe I wanna annotate and mark up and highlight some content with that. Well, again, we're gonna go back to our toolbar over here. And if I expand that out, I can grab that little pen annotation tool because now it brings up a toolbar down below where I can go in and do all those same functions where I can change between pen and line weighting thickness and colors if I want. Uh, and now with this, I can go in and annotate directly over my laptop uh, and draw attention to anything that I want to. I'm still gonna get that same multi-touch capability. I still have that same feature of that gesture erasing as well. And then those same save features also apply. So down on my toolbar, I can select the QR code. It's gonna export everything out so that I can scan that off. Or maybe I just wanna go ahead and save this directly back to my internal storage. Uh, you would just have to select a save path. Uh, and in this case, maybe I wanna just save it to my uh, images folder. And that way it's gonna allow me to go ahead and save this file directly back. So again, you have the ability to show up to nine devices on the screen, have up to 50 devices connected at one time. So if I have a bunch of devices connected, how do I manage those? Well, this little icon that I'm floating around over here off to the side, that if I expand that is my moderator control center. So that's going to show you all the devices that are connected directly to the panel. So I can enable or disable touch for a device. Uh, I can choose to also uh, unshare a particular device, or if I wanna disconnect a device, maybe after class, for example, uh, I can choose to hit that little break the chain link and then just disconnect all the devices once I'm done with class. So it's a great use of being able to have that wireless screen sharing capability. Remember with a PC or a Mac, I'm gonna have that full touch control capability. Uh, but keep in mind with Chromebooks or iPads or mobile devices, I only have the ability to cast. I don't really have that touch control feature. Uh, in that case, you would have to hardwire a Chromebook or anything to get the full touch control over that device. A few other features here on the Android side of the panel uh, is our file manager. So this is important because you wanna make sure that you know where your files are being saved. Now my SWrite whiteboarding software, that's always gonna be saved in that whiteboard folder. Uh, typically save that as an interactive whiteboard file so I can go back and amend that later. Any screenshots or pictures or anything, those are gonna be in the images folder. Uh, likewise with any video capture that I might do uh, and then any zip files uh, also with that. So just keep in mind uh, where your content's being stored. If you need to add another folder to this and kind of customize it, down below I can hit the plus button. Uh, and now this is gonna allow me to give this a custom folder name here. Uh, and now I have my own, my own folder that I can just go ahead and save that content directly into and kind of keep that segmented out from possible other users on the panel. A few other things we've added on the Android side is we do have a Firefox built uh, browser built directly into the panel. So if I need to just jump in, power the panel up and grab a website, I can do that. Uh, we also now have our TouchView app store. 
So this is kind of a curated app store. Um, everything in here is free of charge. You can download that. We've tested it all and vetted it all to make sure that it's appropriate and it runs correctly on the panel with that. Uh, you can also request that other apps be loaded onto the app store. If you just put in a support ticket, we'll see if those run properly and get those populated up to the app store. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about also is our MDM agent. So this allows me to enroll my panel uh, into the client management system to where I can go ahead and manage remotely all my panels that are on the network. So you simply just have to enroll the panel, then we would set you up with a MDM account, and that's gonna allow you to log in from your laptop, be able to see all of your panels on the network and remotely push firmware updates, schedule power on, power off times of day, change inputs, uh, set certificates, for example. Uh, so lots of functionality. I can also use it for kind of digital signage or sending a message into a classroom also uh, with that. So I'll be doing some other videos on this uh, at a later time. A few other things I wanted to touch on on my side toolbar. A couple changes that we've made. Of course, we've talked about the home button. That's always going to take me back to the Android side. That HDMI connector, that's how I can pull up any sources that I may have plugged into my panel. Uh, this little four box menu, that's our utility section. So that's going to allow me, maybe I want to go in and do a screen grab or a capture uh, of just a logo or an image or a picture. I can kind of place this wherever I want to. And then when I hit the little check mark there, it's going to take a screenshot of that and then tell me in the directory path of where it saved it. Typically all your screenshots are going to go into that images folder uh, within the file manager also. Another nice feature that we built into this is screen recorder mode. So because we've integrated that camera and the microphone directly into the panel, now I don't have to have an external webcam or anything of that nature. If I wanted to maybe record a lesson plan using the S-Rite software, I would choose uh, mic and system. So it's gonna use the audio from my microphone, but then system, it's going to record everything on my panel and save that as an MP4 video file. So that's a great way to create lesson plans, training videos ahead of time, maybe getting the students up to the panel engaged. Uh, and when I save that off, it's gonna save in the videos folder on the Android side and that file manager there as well. A few other settings, if I choose that little gear cog wheel, that's how I can bring up all of my system settings and choose a wireless network. I can ethernet my panel with a hardwired cable. I can also turn it into a Wi-Fi hotspot. So I've just named my panel Studio One. So if you're lacking Wi-Fi connectivity in a certain location, that might come in handy. Uh, I can also uh, add in uh, Bluetooth devices, so maybe a wireless keyboard and mouse uh, to be able to add to that as well. I'll go into some more uh, details in a different video of the system settings and really kind of drill down into a lot more specifics with this. Uh, but again, I could go in and be able to adjust power on and power off settings with this. Um, and be able to remotely lock the panel. And then the about button is one way that I can check for firmware updates. Uh, I can name my panel and also bring up that serial number for your panel in case you ever need tech support or anything of that nature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back over to that PC that I have attached. Really nice to have that onboard PC because it's easy just to switch back and forth between Android side uh, and the PC side with that full Windows 10 machine. So one piece of software that I wanted to show you that comes included uh, with no subscription fees is our Mimeo Connect software. And what's really cool about this is it's browser-based. I don't have to have anything installed. Uh, I could just launch a browser, go to mimeoconnect.com, log into my account, and then I'm gonna have all my lesson plans, my teacher dashboard, all that content ready at my fingertips. So we've tied this in with several different LMS systems. So Google Classroom, Microsoft, Canvas, uh, Blackboard, for example. <clears throat> so once we get you an account set up, uh, and give you that authentication code, you're able to log into your account and that's gonna bring me into my teacher dashboard. So if I built out more lesson plans here, uh, it would show all those uh, lesson plans built into my teacher dashboard so that I could just open those and be ready for the next day of class. I can also come over here and I can do a lesson search. So there's other 10,000 lessons that are available that you can either edit or customize or just use these as is. I can go in and search by subject matter I can search by grade level. So there's all kinds of content that are already there, pre-built out and ready to go. We've also included a lot of interactive games. So all of our content is based on interactive touch. So that's a great way if you have some downtime in the class and wanna just have some fun, uh, let the students play with some of these interactive games uh, and they're very, very educational in that regard. Another thing that I really love with this software is I can select the create button. 
because now again, I'm running just a regular web browser, but it's going to bring up uh, basically a whiteboard for me. So now I can go ahead and minimize this back down. Uh, the same things apply where I can choose between my pen color and my line weighting thickness with this. Uh, and again, I'm kind of a space nerd, so a lot of times I like to talk about uh, planets, for example, in class. So again, I can build this out ahead of time and it's gonna save back to my account so I can open it the next morning, or I could just build it on the fly here in the classroom. But down in my toolbar, I can also select the media icon. So this is how I can bring in pictures or images. Uh, I can add YouTube videos, web links. Uh, I can also add uh, OneDrive links and files uh, along with this as well, or even Google Drive content also. So maybe for today, uh, I'm gonna choose YouTube because I wanna add a YouTube video directly in my planets layout. So I'll just pull up my on-screen keyboard here type in the word planets, uh, and now I can just go ahead and select one of these, and it's immediately gonna drop that into my interactive whiteboard with this. So again, I can add multiple pages, just like we did on the SWrite software. Uh, but what's really neat about when I bring in YouTube videos into Connect is if I hit play, that video is gonna start playing right away. Um, and I don't have any commercials at the beginning, so we figured a way to strip out all the commercial content out of the beginning of those videos. So I'm not gonna have to wait five seconds to click to play uh, or have maybe any inappropriate content come up. So again, I can add all kinds of content to this. If I wanted to maybe add some images or pictures, uh, I'll pull up that same on-screen keyboard. And now I can do a filtered Google image search so that I could maybe drop a couple of images directly into my layout as well. So again, maybe I wanna push this one over off to the side and pull that one up there. Uh, it's really up to you how you kinda wanna creatively lay out all of your content with this. So again, that's just another piece of software that comes, pre, that comes included uh, with your no subscription fees or anything of that nature. Uh, and again, there are tons of tutorial videos uh, built directly into this. So if you ever need additional help, uh, you can just go directly to the tutorial section within the software and that's gonna help you out a lot with that. So that's just some of the overview features. Uh, again, look for more and more videos and tips and tricks videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, as we continue to build out content for training and like I said, tips and tricks videos as we continue. Thanks for joining me.